My name is Robert Yarnell. Uh, I am a black belt in Matsubashi Ryu, Shoin Ryu of the Okinawan system. I have been training since uh, the late 50s when I was in high school at six foot one and 135 pounds. During the turmoil of that era, uh, I got chased home a lot because I was a tall, thin, white man. Uh, karate school opened up. I joined that instantly. Uh, train, I had a fortunate to have an instructor named James K. Wax. Uh, from the Marine Corps, he had trained in Okinawa under a man named Ansei Yoshiro and the master, Shoshin Nagamini. Uh, Mr. Wax was a high disciplinarian, as typical with the Marine Corps, and uh, he ran us into the ground, teaching us how and, uh, basics in muscle coordination and control. Uh, I was fortunate to catch on quickly and became an assistant instructor and assisted by teaching in schools that he wasn't able to attend because he'd be teaching at another school because we had a four or five combination of schools throughout the area. I taught there until 62, which I got an offer to move to St. Louis. I came out to St. Louis at 19, uh, 145 pounds, and walked on a karate deck, 50 students in each class. Uh, the only way I could impress them and show them that karate work was to outwork them. So I taught by imitation. They followed my, they, what I did, they had to follow. And that's the way we started back in the early days. Fortunately, as we progressed, we, uh, we came to the point of learning the techniques better ourselves and being able to teach it to the students without so much stress and strain on, on their bodies. Of course, we had to pay the price back in the, in the beginning. Uh, 1963, won the United States Championships, uh, 60, I had fought all over the Midwest and uh, fortunately in 68 I was invited to fight in New Madison Square Gardens and Henry Cho's Tournament of Champions which uh, selected the top 10 fighters in the country. Uh, also in 68 I had the honor of going to Okinawa, training under the master of our system, living in the school and training seven day, six days a week with the master. Coming back from that, I decided to put my life into teaching and developing better students. And we have gone from there that I have developed uh, 1971. I was the first American that was honored by Black Belt Magazine as the top instructor of the year which was quite an honor because that was the same year that Michael Stone became the top fighter in the country. So I felt I had achieved everything I needed and all I wanted to do was develop the best students and teach the best martial arts that I could. And after a while when the Bruce Lee generation passed and everybody started, started their own schools and training halls and everything else and every there was no control, no regulation over the martial arts. So any Tom, Dick, or Harry could take a week's lessons and if he had the money, he could open a school and make, take money from people saying he was a grandmaster or whatever, uh, which has always been a, a problem with me. Uh, takes time and it's an art. It's, it's not a quick money grabber. I have trained the martial arts for 50 years and I still firmly believe that it's still an art. It's not a game, it's not a, a, a sport, and it's uh, basically, it's hard work and it's a lifestyle. And we have continued from there after my business venture when I was 40 years old, losing everything, including my family. I got back into the police, police work, Worked there for 10 years and a couple of friends of mine, mainly Jimmy Smothers and uh, Dennis McMullen and Frank Palermo, talked me into coming back to the school and start to train again, and, which I have done 
And my goal right now is to let people know that martial arts is still an art. It's not a money-making scheme. It's an art for life. And it's a, a culture that you develop the greatest partnership with everybody you meet in life. And it, it is a beautiful thing. And I want to keep it as a martial art, not a game. Thank you.